Coindesk's special mining week presented by Foundry is underway. We're taking a closer look at an industry at a crossroads with features on everything surrounding mining from policy to energy to artificial intelligence. Foundry and Coindesk are both owned by DCG. Joining us now is author and journalist Jeff well, sir, Jeff, you have a new piece on Coindesk. It's focused on AI and mining. Are miners pivoting to AI and why? Weren't they doing just fine without AI? Well, it almost connects the two main themes of this morning show. So, like, Lawrence, we kick things off if you made an AI joke out of the gate because it's hard to talk about anything in crypto without AI, right? It's all the time AI, AI, AI. And secondly, you guys have been discussing that Bitcoin's price is kind of slumping and it has been for a long time, right? So I was kind of wondering, all right, and we already know so many Web3 companies have quote pivoted to AI. So it was like our miners. Um, the short answer is yes and no. The actual ASICs chips themselves that mine Bitcoin, those can't just easily be repurposed. So the home miner who is used to be just chugging along in a mining pool, cranking out Bitcoin, they can't be like, aha, AI is a new thing, I'm doing that. However, the larger companies uh, they have data centers. They've already invested in massive infrastructure. Uh, several of them have explored, okay, we can have economies of scale with security systems, with access to cheap power, with, with uh, cooling systems, right? So these folks have been able to add data, comp data centers and AI computing to the mix to kind of diversify their portfolios. Is it really AI, though? Because, look, I, I, I mean, I remember back in my days as, as a business school student, we used to use Excel to do all sorts of like, you know, truck routings for our our, our information systems classes or whatever it was. I don't remember what, what, what they called it back then. But you basically had, you know, you could you, you could just do it on Excel, you know, like what's the most efficient way to to route three or four trucks? And is this really AI if it's stuff that like you can do on an Excel spreadsheet? Yeah, good question. I think the main reason AI comes into play here is the kind of guts of AI, right? The power of how these chat GPTs and large learning models are working um, requires a ton of data uh, processing power to train those models, right? So unlike, I mean, believe me, Lawrence, I'm a huge Excel guy. I love Excel. Um, I love Excel. It's, well, <laughs> yes, it's a, I'm a pivot table all day. So love it. Yeah. It's less about using, it's less about trying to find solutions in a program like Excel and more about, okay, if we want to allow some startup to have a text to image machine, right? Where I say, I draw me a sword that's dripping with strawberry ice cream, all right? For them to do that, they have to train on massive amounts of data and patterns. Those require high powered chips. There's also a chip shortage right now. It's one reason why OpenAI is not advancing further along on ChatGPT 4.5 or 5. They're saying we'd like to, um, but there's a shortage on chips. So some of these um, previously Bitcoin only miners are thinking, okay, um, if we can, you know, given there's a shortage in supply, can we enter that game by providing um, machine learning, uh, uh, large language model training, processing power to let other AI startups, you kind of outsource to use them for their data in the same way folks use Amazon Web Services and the quote cloud to kind of host their data, if that makes sense. First of all, chips and strawberries, you're starting to get me hungry. Ozempic isn't working. <laughs> but, I, I, you know, here's the thing is, uh, about all this, you know, as, you, as you're talking about this, and I'm thinking to myself, at what point does it make sense to say, you know what, these chips are better off being used for AI than they are for mining. Like, I could probably get more out of it if I if I sacrifice those, those uh, mining chips, if you will, to computing power f solely for AI. Like, who cares about uh, crypto? Great, that's wonderful. Who knows what the price? Is. But I do know everyone's going to be using AI, 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 AI. AI. Why am I going to give it to to crypto? Why why don't I just do it for for something that has high demand? Yeah, it's a great question. I ask the same thing to many Bitcoin miners and the, again, the smaller folks who are mining at home and using their S19 ASIC or the old school S9. They all told me to a person. 
these chips are very, very, very good for mining Bitcoin and not very good for anything else, right? So they can't just repurpose their S19 and say, you know, Bitcoin's out, AI's in. Um, they might want to, but physically they just can't. The chips aren't good for it. So it's less about converting old chips into AI and more about the bigger players saying, Okay, we actually can't. We have to buy new chips. There's a further investments in chips that will work for training AI models, but they can take their existing kind of the, the, the power, the massive plant they built in West Texas or whatever, that can be used to kind of like help the AI processing as well. And they, to your point, Lawrence, that the price of Bitcoin is yo-yoing and so on, they think, okay, now this can help stabilize revenue by adding an additional pie slice to their pie chart of revenue and income. Let's talk about Ethereum miners. How did the switch from proof of work to proof of stake change things for them? How are we seeing AI incorporated in that? Yeah, great questions. You know, obviously the Ethereum miners, once they went to stake, they had, okay, well, we have nothing for these chips to do. So unlike the Bitcoin focused ASICs, the Ethereum chips, they are a little more generally purpose. They can be doing things besides mine ETH. So the large Bitcoin miners I spoke to, including HUT8, they said, yeah, we have HUT8 used to be mining Ethereum before the switch. They said these ships, they can't do that anymore, obviously. So they can repurpose them for some stuff. Um, and that's better than nothing. So we're not going to like chuck them in a the trash can, but it's still not that efficient for AI. So it's borderline useful, but it's not like a silver bullet to suddenly high throttle and high power AI production. All right, Jeff, we are going to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining the show. Thank you guys. You can read Jeff's entire article on coindesk.com. That was author and journalist Jeff Wilser.